Hi all, I have another fascinating high level blitz encounter to show you. Magnus Carlsen against Bada Jabova. So this is the your next move blitz, Belgium. Uh, Leuven in particular. So e4 for Magnus, we have the French defense. And actually Magnus goes for the exchange French, so quite interesting. Now knight f3, uh, bishop d6 is played. And this has the idea of knight e7 later, so not committing the knight. This sometimes can be useful. For example, ordinarily, uh, if bishop d3, uh, knight e7, this is thought to be kind of equalish. This looks like an absurd move, bishop b5. I think usually c3. Um, just checking live book here. So this sort of position, a lot of players with black don't mind to play. And in fact, there's some dynamics in the position. Black can actually try and castle queenside. So I think a lot of players with black might not mind this position. Uh, there's some imbalances. But uh, in this game, actually, after knight f3 into the bishop d3, committing the knight, Yes, I know I said in the previous the London sister video it interrupts the diagonal. But here he's actually playing the knight before the bishop. So sometimes he's playing the bishop before the knight, but here the knight before the bishop. Uh, we have actually bishop d6, but there's a particular intention here of not moving the bishop. c4, he wants to be able to potentially take on c4 with one go. So there's method in the madness of <laughs> the knight before the bishop. Here, c6 knight c3 knight e7 and now the bishop does move here black does take now on c4 to set up a blockade square on d5 it seems a very very logical sensible way of playing for black now to try and just get that iron grip blockade on d5 so why would magnus want this position well white's got good dark square grips for example c5 and e5 but in particular e5 at the moment so it's not all bad news knight e5 he uses that uh, bishop takes e5 giving up the dark squared bishop rook takes e5 queen d7 queen f3 there's a certain amount of pressure on black's position in fact now after knight e4 there might even be uh, some dangerous ideas involving queen g3 coming up soon pinning that pawn we have rook a e8 now queen g3 is actually uh an interesting move in this position it wasn't wasn't actually played here this is actually uh okay for white for example like this yeah uh white is technically uh slightly better here uh but uh qu queen g3 wasn't used here we see a4 now knight e7 and this is a mistake actually black should have it seems in from a theoretical point of view played f6 for example like this chase that rook uh chase the knight away and a lot of forcing moves but black could end up with a fairly nice position actually if we have this scenario the blockade is healthy the rook seems a bit misplaced there's a pin here black's doing fine here but uh in this in this game he played knight e7 which carries with it a weakness of the last move which is immediately tapped into by the world champion although it seems to also underline the d4 pawn is is weak it has some method to the madness but uh what does white play in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video now very very good move by magnus A brilliant move especially for the blitz context i wonder if you can guess Knight f6 check, it pierces through black's dark squares. Black is compelled to take that because of that knight, queen and king folk. Now after queen takes uh, f6, the threat is bishop h6 in slow motion. But how does black actually uh, parry that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually very, very tricky to parry this. If there's also, you know, for example, knight bd5, we can just snap that off and then play rook g5 checkmate so it's not just about the bishop h6 it's both of these threats which make this dangerous now black tries what seems to be a very resourceful defense queen d8 to be able to meet it seems both moves are met here right because rook g5 there's knight g6 and bishop h6 uh, six, there's knight f5 in fact 
hitting the queen, stopping queen g5. So that queen retreat seems very, very powerful, right? The thing is, in this position, another fantastic move is played by Magnus Colson. Can you guess if I give you five seconds? Yeah, rook takes e6. That's available now. If we look, that queen, that's another weakness of the last move. That queen was actually protecting e6. Yeah, Magnus is playing crisp, incisive, weakness of the last move, exploiting moves here. Yeah. That's the car, the one car that's left the entire car park is the e6 one. Uh, so knight bd5, check. Rookie one. White is better now. Winning that pawn, fragmenting black's king side. Rook g8, queen h5. White enjoys potential threats now as well, like bishop c2. Queen b6. But actually, bishop c2 wasn't played here because actually d4 is a liability. In fact, the bishop takes on d5. And now we have bishop h6 looking to play queen takes f7. Black protects that instead of taking on d4. I believe it's too dangerous to swap d4 for f6. Uh, in fact, even stronger than taking on f7 first is this. To take with tempo, this position is very, very dangerous. And in fact, probably winning for white because a rookie 8 threat. Uh, here, this is just very, very good for white in this position. A pawn up with the rook on the seventh. Uh, so basically, after queen c7, uh, we have queen f5 with the threat now. Bishop g5 to f6 would be really annoying. f6 parries that. Queen f3, queen b6. Again, on the d4 case, rook e4. But now b2 is taken. But white, what does white get for this? Well, he gets authority on the e5 in a practical sense. The chances are with white had control in that e file, like footballers have the ball. So rook takes, queen takes. Having that e file threatening now rook b1. Queen a3. Queen e6 now with the threat of queen f7 and rook e8. Now a super fantastic defensive move is played against this. Queen d3 to be able to meet queen f7 with queen g6. So at the moment, actually, the balance is almost there. Rook e4, stopping queen g6, and threatening rook g4. Check. Very, very good defensive play. Bada Jobova. The bishop is hit, the bishop retreats, and in fact, black even threatens mate now. Rook g8. Okay, and with this simplification, it seems most of black's issues are over. The check. Most of black's issues should have been over here. Actually, he's done a fine job of defending this, snatching on b2, managing to get his queen back to the fend. Queen's in a very uh, good place here. But after a5, Magnus is trying to attempt... Uh, well, <clears throat> there's something very interesting here about this position. The bishop and queen are complementing each other on kind of almost boiling the frog, so to speak, boiling the black king they're cutting across all the escape squares so you could imagine if we get a check in it'll be almost like checkmate right because the bishop's covering h6 queen's covering all these light square exits but black here commits a major mistake what he needs to do is not create anything which can be used by Magnus Carlsen to juggle we see that over and over in a number of these blitz games. The downfall of Magnus's opponents is often when they have to juggle more than one thing. Black, unfortunately, with this next move, which seems entirely logical, optimistic, and as a statement as though he wants to win the game, is b5. So who would blame him for b5? It's a passed pawn, right? Common sense. Everything we learn about chess, it's a passed pawn trying to win the game. However, if black just sits tight, sits tight, doesn't try and win the game, and just says, what have you got? And say white plays h4 here, trying to go for a checkmate, because everything's covered, black would be able to respond here flexibly with queen e7. This is the key point. This, this, in, 
diagonal is interrupted by a solid pawn chain here for example like this and what has white got but because black played something very kind of optimistic saying I want to win the game I've got a pawn majority over here the thing is now if we look now after a takes a takes there's a subtle difference can you see what that is after h4 black no longer has the option of queen e7 because of his attempt to win he's created something that magnus can juggle against him the queen's side pawns and the king's side that c6 would be dropping off queen e7 is now impossible because of queen takes c6 that's just horrible for example here if we follow this a bit uh white is just simply uh better here it's i think it's too dangerous to take here because of h5 check and if here queen f5 is, is checkmate for example this this is just uh miles better for white white's actually winning by force yeah, it's going to be winning that queen because uh, if the king steps back, it's like a mate in two. Yeah, the queen, the bishop, and the pawn, in many of the variations, are very, very dangerous together here. The queen covers the light squares, the bishop, the dark squares, and the pawn is delivering the check, which could be mate. But here, yeah, now, in this position, after b5, this is all of a sudden totally winning for white after h5 yeah without queen e7 without kicking that queen away which cuts across squares around the opponent's king this is now a threat of checkmate and there's actually very little black can effectively do against this threat in this position he tries queen e7 now and actually goes right into the checkmate yeah, the queen and bishop have been covering the escape squares. If f5, uh, let's have a look at f5. Uh, which gives one square to the king. So h6 is, is not entirely hot for white. There, but in this position, we can take that square away with bishop g5, still ball the frog, so to speak, threatening the mate in one. Now, h6 here is very destructive. Bishop takes, so if takes, there's queen g6 checkmate, and this is just horrible. This position is just horrible that we got that winning pass pawn now. Yeah, it's just falling to bits that that pawn just wins funny enough so there are horrible scenarios so yeah black he nearly did it he nearly just totally equalized here but because he played this on the queen side he gave something for magnus carlson to juggle when he played b5 one of the points about tactics is is often the double attack is 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 one of the uh the ingredients of any even deep combinations because you're forcing the opponent to juggle multiple issues and they can't with a single chess move they can't address all the issues and here black was like overloaded after that b5 so couldn't use even the queen e7 defensive move then okay i hope you enjoyed this one let's go back to uh yeah it actually ended in checkmate this one hope you found that interesting comments questions like shares appreciated Thanks very much.